Training in the gym has been part of Nathan Costello's life since he was 13 years old. He was, he says, a skinny kid and he wanted to feel better about himself. But getting bigger muscles became an obsession which at one stage led him to using steroids. You look in the mirror, you put on five kilos, you'd think you'd be happy. Well, guess what? Now you want to put another five kilos on. You want to put another five kilos on. When it comes to the weights that you're doing and how much you train, you know, um, you, you, you bench a certain amount and then suddenly you're like, well, now I've got a new goal and the goals just keep coming. He was suffering from what's called bigorexia or muscle dysmorphia. It is effectively reverse anorexia, mainly affecting men in their 20s and 30s. Sufferers can spend hours every day thinking about the size of their muscles, the food they eat and their training regime. Part of what makes this muscle dysmorphia as a, a proper clinical mental illness is that it's starting to impair their job performance or their ability to get along with their friends or to hold down friendships or a relationship and just to function in general. At least half of bigorexia sufferers use steroids to help them in their quest for what they think is the perfect body. But steroids are risky. They're usually illegal to buy without prescriptions and they can become an expensive and potentially deadly habit. Because steroid use is such a taboo topic, the exact number of people who use them is very hard to know. But researchers estimate in the past five years in Australia, they've seen the rate of steroid use go up fourfold. That's a rate that's being mirrored in the United States and Europe. An irony is that while steroid users are focused on improving their bodies, they're using drugs that can damage them and could kill. Some of the long-term side effects include heart disease and more commonly severe depression. Social media fuels the disorder, a barrage of images of muscled, lean bodies that Western culture celebrates. What social media allows us to do is to com not just compare ourselves to the person in the room with us, but to compare ourselves with you know, hundreds and thousands of people um, just from our um, couch. When he was suffering, Costello felt he had no one to talk to. He hopes that by going public, others won't have to suffer in silence too. Andrew Thomas, Al Jazeera, Sydney.